glory of that life. But it seems like you and I have this in common that we have a glory from doing the right thing, from feeling good about helping other people. And that is so attractive. It, it lets me sleep at night. It lets me rest easy knowing that I'm putting some good karma out in the world mm-hmm. and getting some good karma back. But I remember growing up, uh, it was uh, this one older gentleman I always used to talk to people out loud. He, and he's <laughs> always calling me, he said, you're a coward if you steal someone else's items that they work hard for. Oh, really? So when people talk about I'm a tough guy and I'm robbing, he said, you're not tough, you're a coward. Because right. you won't, you refuse to go work for it yourself. And get it yourself, right. So that's what cowards do is take something somebody else worked hard for. And he said the second one, he said, if you out here poisoning and giving your own people this product, right. don't be mad when your own people turn against you. Exactly. And that's what they talk about, snitches and all that. Right, well, right. You know, there's no honor amongst these. So when I remember this older guy, used to always say that. And, and our whole neighborhood heard it. Right. And only a certain few took hold to Took it. hold of it. And the ones that took hold to it, look where we are now. Look right. Look at the ones that did so to me, to see all these kids just continue to think it's glorified to, to be in the streets and sell drugs. Right. It just baffles me. I cannot understand what they. Why think. you would want to throw your the life away? The streets are like undefeated. That. I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good point. The streets. Yeah, that's a good point. They say this is my neighborhood. They come to our, to our neighborhood down. Now we have no neighborhood. Right. So how you claim something that ain't really yours? Right. You're not doing anything to help that neighborhood. You're just doing everything to hurt it. Yeah, and yeah. I understand I mean, people struggling. So when people say I got to do this, this, and that to survive. By all means, I'm not telling you how to live, but understand mm-hmm. whatever you do. There's a consequence. There's a consequence. So don't get upset when that consequence comes knocking at your door. Exactly. And you're blaming everyone else. Exactly. So, you know, I don't, I don't tell anyone how to live. You so know, do you... Again, just make sure that you, you realize that what you do is for you first. Do you think that the disconnect from reality is that they believe it or that they feel like there's no other way? That I think some of them think there's no other way. Because right. you think about it, if you went and did some sold drugs and you get $1,000, right. it might take you two weeks to get, or a whole month to get that at a job. At a regular job. A regular right. job. Right. So you think about it and you try to get a little bit and you see some of the guys fall trapped, but then it's like anything else. It becomes an addiction. Right. You know, when people first took their first drink of alcohol, they never thought that they would be an addict. That's true. They that's true. never thought that they could put themselves this. being at an addict, but that's what happens if you have that type of you know, mentality. That, right. That's just a situation. You're, it just opens the door. It shows the addiction. Yeah. I had the same conversation with my son. He's 15. I don't want him to drink. And I taught him about alcoholism and mm-hmm. the addictive personality. Everyone has some addiction. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has. Exactly. So I'll talk to him about giving the iPad a rest, giving the Xbox a rest. Yeah. Don't, so yeah, same thing. If, you, if you're inclined to it, once you're introduced to it, yeah, it'd be hard to turn away from it. You gotta and, control it. And that note, I think that's what happened to you. I think you're addicted to being successful. Well, I'm addicted to, I'm addicted <laughs> to not giving up. Right. Okay. That's great. That's great. You know, success isn't financially or what you have. It's about being happy. Right. You know, Very being much. effective what you do. So you Very know, much. I can live in a regular house. Right. I can live in a one-bedroom apartment. It doesn't matter. My happiness is making sure I'm good with I am. And, and speaking with that, I saw the Father's Day tweet. Mm-hmm. And you were like, I'm in tears. Do you want to talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, my 18-year-old son, uh, he just graduated high school. And I went to you know, the graduation and whatnot. Okay. And his text was, I was telling him, hey, come do, you know, I want him to go on a book tour with me so he gets to, you know, be with me. He's like, right. I look forward to it. Then his phone broke. And right. he called me on uh, Father's Day and was like, sorry about that because I just missed his call. So he texted me. And when I got to the car and saw him, he was just like, well, man, I appreciate you being a, uh, my father, not a celebrity. Right. And, man, I just broke down. I was like, man, that's what you dream of. Yeah. You dream that your child looks at you as a good father. That's right. As opposed to a celebrity that everyone else is looking to. So, yeah, that was one of the biggest emotional moments in my life. Success. That's a success right there. It's a success in, in a part of me being a good father. Right. And, how, and where did you get it from? Because you had tough parenting. Where so where did what made you want to be? A, yeah, that's true. That's it. That's, that's true. I'm telling you, there's no blueprint except common sense. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. There is nothing for it. All you have to do is realize who's made success and who hasn't. Right. The people who've been successful, go see what they did. Right. What people, are they so doing? as soon as something bad come on TV, what did everybody do? Run to it. Right. Because they want to see. They attract it to the drama. They attract. They attract it to it, and that's what confuses people. I don't right. look at the news like that. Right. If I look at something, it'll be a quick news bite or something like that to mm-hmm. see, catch up on the world. But that's it. I might listen to it once a week. Or right. If I see something, then. But I don't watch the news like people do. People will see something on Twitter or Facebook or something and see something negative, And they'll dig right into it. They'll Google it. They'll go search it. Right. If you was a news or a reporter, that's one thing. That's if one thing. Just yeah, that's a your lot of reason, That's right. what you keep doing. 
Eventually, right. you'll start feeding into it, and it'll right. become an addiction for that. You'll, every time something bad comes, you'll run to it. Newsies. And yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. And, I, and I don't. Like, I, everything about me, I don't know some stuff going on. People tell me about bad stuff. And I'd be like, nah, I didn't know that. Right. Because my mind is clear. I'm happy. I'm <laughs> exactly. I'm life, but I'm paying attention, so I'm not a completely blind. Right. Not naive. Right. Yeah, don't be that. But, but you still realize what you put into your brain is what people is going to function the majority of the time. People right. wonder why. You play video games all the time. Right. You put it in your brain that that's what you enjoy to do, so you're going to do it. I've never played. I've never had a Coke or Pepsi. I don't play video games. <laughs> I don't waste my time. I'll be on social media, marketing, networking, right. you know, making a, a, a passion to make sure I make movies and books. So right. That's what I enjoy doing. Excellent. And I appreciate you writing this book called Stamina. And don't run out of breath before you win. I completely believe in that. And I, we, I have some life lessons that I'm sharing with my son right now. He just had a success. Because he didn't run out of breath. He didn't give up. Mm -hmm. So we're celebrating that. Well, that's good. Specifically education related in his case. Yeah. So. You realize that's, that's it, man. If you get your education, there's nothing no one can tell you what you can't do. Right. But right. if you don't get that, people going to dictate your whole life, man. Exactly. And it's because of them. I know guys who are very intelligent because they didn't get their high school degree. Mm -hmm. People completely shut them down. Yeah. And they were like, well, I'm smarter than him. Yeah, but you didn't prove it. Yeah. I believe you, but you didn't prove it. You got to play the game. You got to play the game. You got to play the game. Once you get that done, if you get a college degree, wow. Right. You know, it's a lot of people with college degrees don't get jobs only because of their character. Yeah, I got they you. Got rude I got you. They got rude ways. They don't be, they're not polite. They're not up, they don't, you know, upbeat with people. So people are like, you got three degrees, but you right. don't even have a personality. I don't even like you. You That's don't smile or nothing. That's the thing. And I hear people all the time, man, I got two degrees and I can't get it. What the hell? I'm like, yeah, look at what you just said. <laughs> That's why I don't like right, you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So people don't realize your character and your success is built upon, well, it's built upon your, your character and your success. Is. So right. if you get your education, man, you can go anywhere you want to. But if you don't get it, people will dictate your life for the rest of your life. And, that, and that's this is very true. One of the reasons we do this show is to create this. I've experienced going to work, been a great employee, and been told I'm only going to pay you this much. Mm -hmm. I try to transfer it to another department. Oh, no, we're not interested. So dictating my life. Mm -hmm. So I quit. You know, of course, I quit with a plan, you know. Right. And I had another job. I had a great job. Then I got a better job. But the point is, it was always somebody else dictating or me dictating. And when I started dictating, things got a lot better. A lot better. And I stopped asking for it and started saying, this is what I want. I'm going to go seek it. Mm -hmm. I was the kind of person I wouldn't quit a job. Yeah. I would just work a job forever. Eight years on a job. Which is, that's great to be mm -hmm. able to hold a job down, right? Right. It's super great. But at the same time, if that's all I do, then I'm, I'm cheating myself. I'm, but if that's I'm cheating you myself. Do, you had the option to do that. Right, absolutely. That's, that's my yeah. thing. As long as you, you get the option of yourself to do it. Exactly. But if you rely on people and you don't, you're not able to do it, that's when they dictate your life. Yeah. But if you're able to do what you want to do and still be happy, yeah. you can sit at home all day and, and you're able to live. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this show is for me. That's what the Three Show Show Three Little Show podcast is for me. And it's my dream job. Right. So I'm doing my best to be just like you, get the books and the movies out. Mm -hmm. my, my son's a young filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So we I'm trying to make sure his skill set is in place so that he can dictate his life at an earlier age right. than I was when I started trying to dictate my life, right? Because yeah, rule number one is your children should be better than you. Thank you. Every I, single one that you read, your I children agree. should be better than I you. I tell them all the time. Because if not, we'd all be in the same place the rest of our lives. Right. Like, we would have never had computers. You know, if everyone would have stayed the same right. in the 1800s, right. we'd still be in shock. Right. You know, so up to other people to change and make us better. And that, and our kids are what we need to make sure to do, to do it. But these, some kids, they don't get it. They're like, wow, man, we just know. We need you. <laughs> we need you to we be do better. need we you. We need you to be yeah. smarter than me. Quit talking about, I ain't going to be. You think you know it all. This is the right. No, I'm trying to get you to know it all. Exactly. So you can keep going. Exactly. You know, but, you know it's tough sometimes. But some of them, they, get, they, they keep working. And like I said, if you don't run out of breath, you will win. Right. Right. And that's a great, that's a great point about stamina. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea behind this book is the reason that I came to see you. The, the fact that you didn't quit, you didn't give up, you didn't get off course. Right. So you have bumps, you have bruises. But when you became a parent, you immediately wanted to be a better parent than what you had. Than when you were parented. Mm -hmm. So, where do you think that came from as far as your relationship with your family, it's your re church relationship, your mentors? Well, it was basically just everything that I've gone through. You, you didn't know? want to take your kid through you that? Can't, you can't do that. You mm -hmm. have to want better for, for you and anybody that you care about. That's his bottom line. You know, spiritually, emotionally, 
whatever it may be, you have to want more for that. And they, and they did that. You know, when I had my son at 14, and he and I used to sleep in, you know, on a mattress at, at 16, and he was two, <laughs> I said, come help me make the bed up. Right. And he's, la- he's looking, but I'm like, even though it's a mattress on the floor, right. he knew to make his bed up. That's a good point. When he, when he turned 15 and 16, he was still making mm. his bed up because I had already instilled it in him. Excellent. At this age of 24, right. he still <laughs> makes it up. And that's the difference. When you have that implemented in an early age, they continue to build on that. And yeah. That's all you can have. That's fantastic, man. I think as from, from what you're sharing with me, I think you're doing a great job parenting. Well, thank you. Because I'm relating. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really, we have one child. We'll probably have some more soon. Mm-hmm. But it's tough. It's tough because you want to do what's right. You want to teach your kids right. You don't want to teach them to not think. And that's what that's what I struggle with. Listen to your teachers. Do your assignments. Mm-hmm. But you also want them to have their own identity. Mm-hmm. So, with the like we're talking about being addicted to social media. Right. It's like, you don't want to be like that. I unplug a little bit. Mm-hmm. Pull it back. This is what I'm trying to share with you. Despite what you're seeing over here. You see the, the Bugatti's being purchased. Being mm-hmm. dipped in gold. That's fantastic. He did it the honest legal way, speaking about Florida right. recently. But at the same time, you don't have to, to place your life in a path to achieve for material. Mm-hmm. Place your life in the path to, to achieve a great personality, to be a good person, right. and everything else will fall in place. Absolutely. And that's the part that I'll struggle with him. Just mm-hmm. trying to make sure that he, he keeps an even head. And well, kids going to always stray away. Yeah, okay. The thing about it, they have some foundation to right. come back to. Right. If they stray away too far, then that's a life decision they'll have to live with. Right. And that's why I told my son, I was like, I love you to death, but mm-hmm. you cannot dictate my life anymore. Right. You are a grown man at this point. <laughs> Your life is about you. I right. am here to help you as best way I can, Support but I've done you. the best way of teaching you. Right. you know, I told my son when you was born, you would never know a rap verse before you know a Bible verse. That's nice. So I put him in that <laughs> mindset nice. that he that's was nice. going to sleep with Bible stuff. He was mm-hmm. falling asleep to listening to it. So when he woke up, he heard it. He never forgot that point. Even though he stepped away, yeah. he knew where to come back to. Right. Families nowadays so passionate on trying to get their kids to be successful, mm-hmm. they forget to teach them the basic rules of respect, right. mannerisms, you know, certain things that just Courtesy. take you a long way. I want to do a show for y'all. I want to perform for y'all. Starting next week, though. <laughs> We shouldn't, we crack jokes about things you wouldn't